this is a statement on the process of preparation for mass renewal of national identity cards. Last Wednesday, the Honorable Ethan Naluima, member of parliament for Kiso District, raised the matter on the process for renewal of national identity cards, including whether there are any prescribed fees and how often renewals will take place. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, this serves to answer her queries but also to provide an update on the process of preparation for mass renewal of national identity cards as follows. One, rollout is slated to begin on 1st June 2024. Uh, matters training in readiness for the new National Security Information System, NSIS, capacity building for relevant staff in line with MOSIP. Customization is ongoing for four weeks now in India. Financials, right honorable speaker and honorable members, this house approved a supplementary funding of Uganda shilling 300 billion and accordingly, this money was provided to the Minister of Finance and Economic Development for the mass enrollment and mass renewal project, which is broken down as follows. Development, uh, Uganda shillings 208 billion, recurrent Uganda shillings 92 billion. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, government has apportioned shillings 192 billion of the supplementary budget of 300 billion for quarter three financial year 20, 2023-2024 and NIRA expects to receive the release of the supplementary budget. Procurement. Procurement of the system and other supporting accessories has been set in motion and this includes things like UPS and generators. ICT procurements following the approval of the funding, the new national security information system related procurements have also commenced with requests for approval of N7 forms by NITA U and approvals have been obtained in that respect. A list of ICT procurements under the mass enrollment and renewal exercise is attached here with as Annex 1. There are also other procurements, right from the speaker, related to the mass enrollment and renewal exercise, which are ongoing and also are attached in detail as Annex 2 to this statement. Recruitment, a human resource committee has been established to handle the recruitment processes for the exercise. This is being done in consultation with the Minister of Public Service. Recruitment money is yet to be released. In the next one month, advertisement is going to happen and districts need to be keen to ensure participation. NERA is to give the necessary guidelines by 15th Feb 2024. There's also the legal issues around the exercise, the legal regime. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, the Principal Act uh, is the Registration of Persons Act, ROPA, Act number 3 of 2015. This will not be touched. However, Regulations thereunder will be amended, namely the Registration of Persons Regulations, Statutory Instrument Number 67 of 2015, Regulation 23.2, that is Form 9, the Application for Renewal of National Identification Card. This form is being amended to remove repetitive information to simplify the process with the aim of improving the turnaround time at renewal. Number two, registration of persons in bracket fees regulations, statutory instrument number one, statutory instrument one, um, statutory instrument number nine of 2016, regulation two, on fees payable, and this is key for the Honorable Nalima, uh, for renewal of a national ident identification card, including penalties for default in renewal by citizen. The amendment here is intended to remove the fees payable by a citizen for renewal of a national ID card. 
and instead introduce fees, fees right from the speaker and honorable members only for express service, where one requires express service to get an ID. Uh, I want to also further clarify that the law of national identity cards every after 10 years. This was premised on the idea that the security features of these IDs degenerate with time. So too, the physical features of individuals, which also change over time, hence requiring renewal within 10 years, which was seen within the law as reasonable. However, this has a huge cost implication, and that's why honorable members were worried uh, the repetition of this exercise. The comfort, therefore, lies in the speed with which technology is advancing, which is uh, fortunate. That is why, with anticipation, it was planned to include in the new IDs a mobile platform which can allow for electronic update of one's profile. The planned amendments were presented by NERA management to the NERA board at its 78th meeting held on 3rd August 2023 for consideration. The proposed amendments were approved and submitted to the first parliamentary council after board approval and we wait progress on the matter. Data migration tests have also to establish quality of biometric data have shown a 92% success in light of the fact that each person's biometrics will be re-enrolled to take into account the actual iris, poor quality bio biometrics will be addressed at this point. On 7th August 2023, NIRA and MOSIP, MOSIP stands for Modular Open Source Identification Platform, began analysis of the existing data by checking the formats and the different quality of the biometrics. This will guide on the data migration path and development of the data migration scripts and strategy by USPC. The following stages of tests have been completed. One, installation and configuration of the test database. Two, exportation and importation of data in the test database. Three, installation and configuration of the Docker's desktop. Four, installation and configuration of WireGuard application. Five, installation of Java and Bot tool used for data quality check. And then last, analysis of 1103 fingerprint and face image quality check was completed and awaiting a final report from MOSIP. The team is currently working on column mapping and preparation of the entity relationship diagram ERD. Hard to reach areas, this was a specific question. Regarding this matter of hard to reach areas, there are three notable constraints that have been factored and planned for. One, power connectivity challenges. Two, internet connectivity challenge. Three, transport constraints. The government intends to deliver kits in each district of the country for the exercise of mass enrollment. Money for the movement of kits has been planned for. This sorts the transportation issue. Right on both speaker and honorable members, approximately 2,750 kits with solar panels will be available in addition to each district having a 5 kV generator for the exercise. Last, each kit will have two connectivity devices and connectivity mapping is ongoing for each parish countrywide. I hope, right honorable speaker, this update adequately answers the honorable members' questions in addition providing an update on the whole exercise to the House uh, in this regard. I beg to submit right honorable speaker and honorable members. Thank you, Honorable Narima, Honorable Baiga. Then Honorable, honorable Joyce, Agore, Pachito, Enos. Renewal process is concerned. First of all, good enough, I'm a student of IT with a Master's in Information Systems. When you look at the processes that have been explained to us here under seven, you realize that Technically, they are even explaining to us that even the process of the uh, IT process, rather that the IT processes talked about are not yet complete. Because if you are still under installation and analysis, you have not yet shown that the process that will be used is complete. So we shall need clarity also on that. But what's most worrying 
if the minister is informing us and not showing that money has fully been provided by finance, we know what has always been taught to us as far as uh, having money in the budget and the release, the release processes. We still await that full confirmation of how it is because this is very key. National IDs mean a lot. And two, we still request they borrow leaves from neighborhood countries that don't renew after every 10 years. Look at Kenya, uh, look at Rwanda, look at South Africa, look at Botswana, because you are aware of how every moment we are told about budget constraints vis-a-vis -vis the economy. And finally, being that I'm a shadow minister for local governments, and for some good time at least from my student times, I've been close to local governments. When you refer to the fact that under eight, that, uh, under the recruitment process, and you refer to the fact that districts should take in interest, then you are referring to that district. Given all the challenges districts face through, I would pray that we later on should be provided with what exactly is going to, trans, uh, to, 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 to take to transpire. We should know that you plan that for districts you will be in touch and touch with you will be in touch with this person. You are going to those details are needed. Don't just say districts take in. So it will be helping us more to know for us as member of parliaments as we monitor the process what is going on. But most of all, we pray after this, you look at other countries that do not renew as long as someone has made 18 years and use those biometrics. I thank you. Thank you very much, Right Honourable. My constituency, there are money lenders. I don't know which tier it is and they, under what license they are operating. And the only security they take is a national ID. And they have boxes and boxes of national IDs because it is the only security that our people have in order to lend them money. And I can now see the process of renewal coming. Either they are going to make a loss because their securities will no longer make sense. Or if there is a requirement that somebody must hand in the old ID, many, many people will miss out on national IDs in Bukwe South constituencies and Bukwe district in general because that is where these money lenders are. Dear sir, how would you want to handle such citizens who have mortgaged their national IDs? Thank you. The Minister for the good news of cost-neutral IDs for our citizens. I was very happy. I even clapped when I, when I heard that news because some of our people cannot afford to replace IDs. Now, right, Honorable, there is only one thing which needs to be handled. The minister explained a window for express fees. Even though there are free IDs, there is a window for express fees. He only, perhaps if he had also explained or given a standard waiting lead time, then it will up. Otherwise, then it, the waiting will be abused as our people will be forced to, to wait longer so that they can pay for express fees if the standard is not set. I pray that gets added. Thank you. Now, and the timeline, because this process is the one which, from which we are going to extract the register for the election. And we need to have this we just, I think, read by around Jan 2025. When I was checking, you need to renew 15.2 million IDs. You need to, re, uh, uh, to, to enroll around 17 million new ones. Okay? And then, you, for you to be able to do this, maybe the anticipation had been that by June of this year, you would have done it. But now, when you look at the gaps, I'm just having a fear. You're doing a great job, but you need to arrest our fear that you will meet the dead end so that we don't go into a national crisis, especially because you're changing to a new system.
the same kits which are going to be used for, uh, for sensors are going to be used for this purpose. So procurement of the kits, integrating the system, looking at the renewal, looking at the en new enrollment, extracting the national register. We are having a huge, huge interest in this project. For the moment it fails, it can fail the whole country in terms of democracy and other issues. To the previous one is much more because you have to really work with the timeline of electoral activities. The about it's not only 15.5. The voter population is going to increase by about 2.5 million people. So those seven uh, about 18 million voters have to be registered. And if we are going to wait up to June, and we have only about six months, the last 15.5 million data to be collected, it took two years to be collected. So the volume of work is so much, I appeal that you do something quite extraordinary. I have three issues to, to present to you, to appeal to you. The timely appointment of the officers and their facilitation. That is one thing that has dragged this process back now that the money is there. The top management should not hold on to this money here. The people who do the donkey work, the front soldiers on ground, many times they are forgotten about and the quality of work is compromised. Two, political support. I want to appeal to members here. In the last registration, we had issues where our, our friends in the opposition would go to the constituencies and begin to demobilize the population from registering for national ID. On the, on the last day, they are the very ones to go and register. We've had these issues. So I want to take this opportunity to appeal to the House, to all leaders, to go and mobilize citizens to register for the purpose of being citizens of this country. We should not politicize this process. This is a national exercise. It is an exercise that determines whether you are a citizen of this country or you are not. It's not a political party issue. I want to thank you. In India for training and recruitment. This needs a timely ma uh, matter. Because last time, because of the non-recruitment of these people earlier enough and failure to have proper training, caused the number of issues that many people were registered on dates that they didn't provide. You find the information paper has different date, but the actual national ID has a different ad. And many people missed out even on SAGE because of such. I have an example of even my parents. They put the date of my mother's date, which was 10 years earlier, and my father could not get this stage, even when he was 90. And yet when you look on the information paper, he had really provided the right age. So this time round, these people should have enough time of training before they do uh, the, the registration. And lastly, and lastly, those people whose debts were misstated or quoted, are they going to be allowed to renew with their rightful debts. Thank, thank you, Honorable Joyce. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, my concern is about uh, whether the ministry has an arrangement for people with disabilities who do not have fingers. In the last registration, these people were denied to register. We have a case of a man from Luero, a chairperson of the District Disability Council. He was denied to, to register, and as a result, he did not get his national ID. Secondly, right... People were going to register, the officials were going to register on the ground. So guide against the following. One, masqueraders. Those are going to masquerade as citizens. Secondly, the foreigners who also want to register. And also impersonators. And more so when we have uh, 
refugees, especially along the border line. The Sudanese refugees along the border line might want also to register. So the officers must be very, very, very careful in trying to find out all those who qualify to be registered as citizens of Uganda. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Tim. We did our part in passing that supplementary budget. I do not feel like the Minister gave a proper explanation as to why this delay has come about. Secondly, right now we have some people who are still applying for national IDs, and uh, within a period of six months or so it will be expired. What is going to happen? Should they still keep applying for these national IDs? And uh, lastly, Right Honorable Speaker, has the Ministry actually nearer learned the lessons which has caused delay before? Because especially people with mixed races, there has been a very big backlog on them actually failing to get national IDs. Some of the issues like uh, they were requesting for birth certificates for the mothers who were born in the 1930s and something, where those issue, uh, registries were still not in place. So have they actually come up with a proper system to avoid such delays so that there's lack of discrimination in among people getting national IDs? Thank you. Kajara. Thank you, Mr. 25. When they go to replace their lost IDs or to correct their data, they get IDs which will expire beyond 2025. Meaning that some people have IDs which will expire in 2032-2033. So, I need clarification from the Minister. When we come to renew our IDs, will those people keep the ones they have or they will get new ones? And if they are to get new ones, why do they get IDs whose expiry date is beyond 2025? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Kedian Longo, Kavura, Engineer. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker and members. Uh, Kiriandongo has a special category of people. They are called the Maragoli community. They missed out uh, for enrollment in the last enrollment. According to them, they said they qualify to be recognized in the Constitution in the third schedule as indigenous community. Uh, the government has promised them over time that they will establish the Constitutional Review Commission to include them in the, in the third schedule so that they can also qualify to be citizens and acquire uh, national IDs. But all this has not been implemented. They are very much worried that they are going to miss out on this enrollment. They are there without, no, without national IDs. Uh, two of our constituency MPs, the Honorable Karovanga Jacob Ateni, uh, together with, the, in the last parliament, Honorable Jack Odur, tried to table private members' uh, bill on constitutional amendment, but they have not gone through. They are requesting for this house to really find a way of assisting them. They don't want to miss out on this enrollment. Right, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Kabura. Wait, don't say ah, 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 ah. Rwandis of Ugandan oh, origin. Oh, oh, no. of Rwanda, sorry, my yeah. apologies. That's, uh, that's not parliamentary. So I apologize, Mr. Speaker. But my concern is that those Rw Rwandan, uh, okay, Ugandans of Rwandese origin, okay, thank you for the correction. They always find challenges in being registered for national IDs, and at times, actually specifically also on, um, on the passports. And they usually run to us to, to put uh, a recommendation letter on their origin and all that. I would like to take this opportunity to ask the Honorable Minister to, I think, find a way to pass a regulation on how we deal with such uh, citizens. Because they seem to have uh, descendants across the border, but, at, uh, but uh, when you look into their matters, they're actually Ugandans. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Engineer. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I thank the Minister for the statement, and the, I agree with the Minister that uh, probably after every 10 years, the physical future of somebody changes. But the personal data is usually for a lifetime. Whereby, if somebody's data is the same, why does it have to take that long to process the renewal? Then secondly, he has talked about the issue 
of Express, in case you are renewing the national ID by Express. I would empower the minister to check how Minister of Works has done it when we are renewing our driving license. So long as you go there and your data is right, you get a driving license instantly, yet the driving licenses have been changing over and over time, including adding in statutory features. Instead of putting the Ugandans on hold to wait for ages, when, in case they apply and they travel, or they are away to come back again to pick the same national ID. I thank you. Honorable your attorney, uh, Entebbe Municipality. Employment of your staff. Staff should be uh, deployed and uh, sent to areas where they have at least some cultural relationship, language understanding, and the orthography is very important. Many people have their names misspelled. You deploy somebody from Buganda to go and work in the in 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 language, for example, he doesn't know how they write the names. Somebody has a, a, a national ID, but his name is, you know, badly spelled. It is bad. Some people don't want even to, ident uh, to identify themselves with such national IDs. As you are going to recruit uh, Honorable Minister, I beg that you, 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 you deploy people to areas where they have that cultural connection to help us come up with uh, uh, the real correct names uh, to avoid factory damages of our uh, national IDs. I beg to submit. Thank you. Honorable colleagues, allow me, I'm still on this side, but allow me pick one person. Thank you, Mr. Ch Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, I want first of all to thank Honorable Naluima for raising this matter. And I don't know, Mr. Speaker, why the ministry, these ministers on their own, deny this parliament information. You see, each one of us here has an issue to raise, Mr. Speaker. But hadn't it been for Honorable Naluima to raise this through a matter of national importance? I don't know when the minister had planned to give parliament this information. Mr. Speaker, sir, that having been said, I want to know, first of all, uh, if it is not prudent for us to rethink this exercise. First of all, uh, even before we talk about renewal, a number of Ugandans have not accessed the first registration yet. They have not got the the IDs, but the, we are talking now about a mass exercise to do the renewal, even before each and every Ugandans procure an ID. Two, Mr. Speaker, sir, when you hear the presentation of the minister, it gives you a feeling that NIRA is just beginning. It has it, everything, they are procuring everything, they are going for training, they are doing everything for the first time. So. It is even difficult to believe that this institution has been around for some years now. And even some of the things for which they need money are very basic, Mr. Speaker, sorry to say so. Two, the issue of local government's involvement. It is high time, Mr. Speaker, that we, we revisit the issue of decentralization. The Constitution, Article 176, provides that for whatever we do, we shall devolve the responsibilities and the functions to local governments in an organized manner. Some of these matters would be quickly handled and in the best way by local governments. But you see that NILA is over-centralized. That is why the minister was saying that the local governments better take interest. Whereas they would have been the implementers because they are the governments that are near the people and know their areas better than any other institution, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, banks have already issued, issued us with warnings uh, that with the expiry of our IDs, that will make them hold our accounts. I don't know if that time comes and the IDs are not ready. What the minister is, trying, is planning to do uh, for institutions that will consider our IDs expired, including courts of law. And lastly, Mr. Speaker, every other day we, 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 we increase the law of the ID. For students now, 
the new education policy uh, introduced uh, the recording of results for national examinations from the day a student joins senior secondary. And those results are recorded on somebody's Nini number. Where a student does not have a Nini number, the student is required to provide the Nini number of the parent. So it, 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 it appears that the ID these days is more important, is, is required in so many areas than we had originally thought about. And I think it is high time we, we draw a proper uh, distinction between the voters' ID and the national ID. Because it doesn't pro mean that every citizen of Uganda is a voter. Yet every citizen of Uganda is qualified for national ID, including children. So we cannot page the issuance of a national ID to elections because voters are voters. And, you know, uh, there was a colleague who was saying that we had told the people to boycott the registration. There is a difference between boycotting re the registration of voters and then the registration of citizens for the purpose of the national ID. And I think, Mr. Speaker, we should do, draw a clear line between the two. Lastly, when... We one, one thing, Mr. Speaker. Oh, on our numbers, you don't do it that way. You request without switching on the microphone. You know Much there are rules which I'm following here. Much obliged. Honorable colleagues. Just, I'm, I'm thinking about other colleagues because I what? have other statements. Just conclude there quickly, Honorable. As I conclude, thank you, As a shadow speaker. minister. As I conclude, last week we had an exercise in Mokono. It was a show of go back to school. And Nila was registering people for IDs. Now, today, we are talking about uh, renewal. So what is the purpose of the continuous registration when there is a, a provision that every 10 years we shall be renewing? One of those exercises is redundant. And for me, the exercise of mass renewal of IDs is redundant. And it is high time this parliament thinks about withdrawing it, you know, taking, you know, rethinking this exercise, Mr. Speaker. It is very expensive and it introduces a responsibility that is so costly to the country, yet it is redundant. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I, I think, Honorable Minister, you will need to clarify whether the biggest push is because you're introducing a new, totally new ID with integrated futures and a new systems, you know, which can provide more services so, so that we bring everyone on board. Honorable uh, Nachimuri. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. We have had illegal immigrants into the country um, and they use there is, a, there is an island next to Kalangala from Tanzania. They come into the country and, uh, and they get um, IDs. Actually, they come during that time of IDs. I don't know who informs them, but they come to the country during issuance of IDs. They get our IDs and they purport to be Ugandans, and yet they, they, they steal property of people in Kalangala. They steal uh, fishing nets. They even kill our people. Recently, uh, there were two fishermen who were burned. They wanted their fuel, they wanted their nets, they refused to give them the, the nets, and they burned them. And one of them survived, he's the one who told the story. So we have this issue, I think you should take it up, especially when issuing national IDs. And also, uh, Mr. Speaker, they talked about, he talked about um, issuance of generators, to especially hard to reach areas. Mr. Speaker, we have had an issue. We, the islanders, are told that government property does not cross the waters to go to further islands because I hear there is insurance and all that. So I want you to confirm to us, are these, gener are these generators going to cross to the deeper islands? Because I have 84 islands. There are islands in Buvuma, about 54. But uh, government only looks at the main island where the district headquarters is, they put their property there. Mr. Speaker, for reference, we got an ambulance 
for Chamus or sub count, sorry, constituency. But we asked for a ferry to for, for this to be taken, and the minister uh, and the person we asked said, no, we have to inquire from the minister to see if government property can go there. But the ministry said it is supposed to go to Chamus or constituents. I am wondering because people in Chamus are also pay taxes, they need to get the services. Thank you. So are these um, uh, are these generators also going to go to the islands? or they need insurance to stay at the main island. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, this is very close to the one from Honorable Hill. Honorable Speaker, I also want to add my voice in thanking the minister for the statement. I have about three issues. One of them is, I don't know whether this mass registration is going to take care of uh, the use of a centralized data. In other countries, this data that is got is used once, it's actually got once. When I go to passport, it's the same data that I will use. When I go to, um, for driving permit, to get a driving permit, it's the same data. But then when I, when I want a passport, they will ask me fresh information. And yet, I already have a lot of information with NERA. So I don't know whether this is going to take care of this so that we have a centralized data that can be used actually across board. And secondly, this would actually help us a lot with our revenue collection. In other developed countries, these needs that we have actually summarizes you as an individual or as a citizen. Because if you fail to pay tax, it will detect that Akela Lucy has failed to, to pay tax. When I go to renew my my, 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 my passport, or I go to renew my, um, my permit, it will show that I have not paid my tax and I will not be given, you know, that document. Secondly, it is about the issue that Honorable Chan raised, but I'm going to bring it from another angle. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, in the last registration, we had very interesting scenarios where the machine would actually read a human being as a a gorilla, because they would fail to, or a chimpanzee, because they would fail to get the features of the, yes, they would fail to, yes, the machines fail to, to detect the, 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 the features the, of the thumb. Actually, I have an ID which says, cannot sign, that I, I cannot sign. I have it, simply because the machine failed to acknowledge and read my signature. So it just said unable to sign. So are we taking, are we taking care of these things? And then, uh, of course, Honorable Lukwang talked about the quality. I think the new ones, really, we must work on the quality, the picture quality, and everything in it. Otherwise, thank you, and uh, I wish you well. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and in Akaseke, we have 400 so people. Uh, they fail to get national IDs, not because they don't want, but uh, these biometric machines failed to read their, their fingerprints. Specifically, people who are in, who are in construction, uh, cement destroys their fingerprints. Women who are in saloons, Cosmetics, eh? they destroy their 